ever heard of underwater farming? This new farming technique's getting popular all over Europe. You might have never given seaweed much thought, it's just some green, yucky plant that sticks to boats. But now, it's being used as a crop for almost every use you can imagine. In this video, we'll be diving into the plans for giant seaweed farms in European waters. Is underwater farming really the next big thing? Let's find out. First off, how did this underwater farming come about? Well, it all started in 2012 when Dutch business consultant Rebecca Weering and lawyer Jennifer Breton set out on a mission to make the food industry healthier and less wasteful. The two women thought, hey, why not farm seaweed? It's sustainable, cheap, and used everywhere. And so, one of the first underwater farms was planted in Europe. Now, seaweed farming is a growing food industry with more people jumping in on the idea. But it's tough to work. To farm seaweed, companies first cultivate spores in labs and then place them on ropes in hatcheries. Once the seaweed starts to grow, the lines are moved out into the ocean, and after a few months, it's harvest time. So now forget growing plants in your backyard, you can grow unlimited crops off the coast. The sea is your oyster. So how's Europe meeting the budget for such giant seaweed farms? Of course, it helps that such underwater farms are backed by the European Commission. The European Union is giving financial support of over $227 million to such projects, which is expected to increase. The Dutch government, for one, is not playing around with this new venture. It's proposed to set aside 400 square kilometers of its territorial waters in the North Sea for large-scale seaweed cultivation. Take, for instance, the Dutch firm The Seaweed Company that's farming kelp off in waters everywhere. And we mean everywhere, the west coast of Ireland and even in Moroccan and Indian waters. Germany and Ireland have also jumped on the bandwagon, while Scotland's leading the way in the UK. Just this summer, a breakthrough was made off the Dutch coast. Some 12 kilometers out to sea, a converted fishing boat harvested a batch of farmed seaweed by the North Sea farmers. This was the world's first mechanical harvest of an offshore seaweed farm. Europe might have been late to the seafaring trend, but it's rushing ahead of competitors with amazing speed and innovation. Now, you might be thinking, why seaweed? Believe it or not, this ugly-looking plant is now one of the most in-demand crops. And no, it's not just used in salads, sushi, or birthday soups in K-dramas. It has a range of uses from animal feed, fertilizer, and cosmetics, and now also as a biopackaging to replace plastic. Seaweed also absorbs carbon dioxide much quicker and is getting popular as a biofuel. In fact, this slimy plant's getting called the answer to world hunger. Currently, global seaweed production is dominated by Asia, mainly China. Just in 2019, about 97% of the worldwide harvest came mostly from Chinese waters. Europe's new to the game with only about 1% of global production. But more more and more commercial underwater farms are popping up along Europe's coastline. But why go to such lengths to harvest off the shore? The beauty of underwater farming lies in its sustainability. You don't need lots of land fertilizers or harmful pesticides anymore. Well, you don't even need land. Countries facing a water crisis might turn to algae as the answer to their problems. Now you can feed large populations while also supporting marine ecosystems. North Sea Farmers alone has 100 members, including food and consumer goods giant Unilever and the energy firm Shell. They have big plans for European waters. Over the next decade, they hope to increase production dramatically. This year, the seaweed industry was worth $40 billion. Shockingly, this is predicted to soar to $95 billion by 2027 alone. With such huge figures, it's no surprise most European producers wish to scale up their underwater farms. Look at Seaweed for Europe, another trade group for seaweed producers. It's just as ambitious as the others, aiming to produce 8 million tons of farmed seaweed by 2030. Too unrealistic? The company calls it completely achievable. And not everyone's happy about the giant kelp farms. Some believe this new farming is just another attempt at greenwashing. Sure, it looks nice to not use artificial fertilizers and harmful pesticides for once, and also create new marine ecosystems. What could possibly go wrong with this sustainable technique? A lot, says Seas at Risk. This group is a coalition of more than 30 European environmental organizations banned together to protect Europe's seas and oceans. They fear that underwater farming's become the new green hype, but we're glossing over its dangerous impact. By growing bigger and bigger, these large-scale ambitious projects are crowding out other sea organisms. Renier Nota, a specialist seaweed researcher, weighed in. One of the most important questions is the impact of algae cultivation on the nutrient balance of the sea. The emerging farms could lead to a decline in phytoplankton, a very important food for fish. And once the fish starts starving, so 
will all the other marine life up the food chain. We knew it sounded too good to be true. Even the ambitious farms are not too confident about their plans. North Sea Farmers has admitted that they can't really tell the environmental impact such farming will have. What they need are much larger test farms to figure out what's going on. Moving on, the concerns are more than just environmental ones. As we said, seaweed farming comes at a huge financial cost. Off Germany's Baltic Sea coast, biologist Eva Stothot's managing an EU-funded project. She aims to see if growing kelp at offshore wind farms is a good economical solution. Now the test site's 100 kilometers from the coast and subject to bad weather. That's another drawback, unexpected weather. To grow anything in such rough waters requires especially tough moorings for the lines and an advanced array of sensors to monitor growth. When trying to convince seaweed companies in Europe to invest here, Eva's faced many rejections. Turns out even the most ambitious companies think it's absolutely crazy to start underwater farming in such conditions. Perhaps some hopes to join the new farming hype will be crushed. It's not for every weather after all. For now, the answer lies in smaller operations and more extensive testing. If the European underwater farming industry continues to grow at the alarming rate it is, we're only going to have another environmental disaster on our hands. And now, in other news, ragworms might be the new locally sourced meal for Norwegian salmons. As imports get more expensive and demand for fresh salmon rises, farmers have been looking for cheaper, local food for their fisheries. Researchers then came up with the idea to feed ragworms some seaweed, and the results were surprising. Now, instead of relying on seaweed as food for salmon, Norway has better plans in mind. Ragworms can eat seaweed and, in turn, provide high-quality, locally sourced, and more sustainable feed for the salmon. This exciting discovery means good news for the farmers, too. Before, they had to rely on soya protein and less environmentally sound raw materials as feed. These had to be transported long distances to Norwegian fish farms, and high demand meant high prices. And the seaweed farms alone weren't much help. Seaweeds have high levels of carbohydrates and too little fat to feed the salmon directly. But now, the seaweed-ragworm combo makes things simpler. By first feeding the seaweeds to ragworms, they get a higher quality of feed that's rich in omega-3, marine proteins, and fatty acids. And in the end, it also avoids wastage of residual raw materials from seaweed farming. So it looks like a win-win solution for all. Next, underwater farms get a little help from drones. Move over, divers. Drones are here to help. A research led at Hirat Wat University successfully oversaw the testing of its underwater drone. They believe this remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, is a game changer for offshore wind farms, leaving no need for divers. The engineers are confident that soon this drone tech will be ready to perform inspections and maintenance at remote wind farms. Where once such tasks had lots of risks and costs, now it's simpler and cost-effective, paving the way for the expansion of aquaculture and wind farms. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson promised to make the UK the Saudi Arabia of wind power. Europe has high hopes for generating electricity offshore to power every UK home by 2030. With drones as helping hands, this dream doesn't sound far-fetched anymore. And finally, underwater imaging technology will make salmon farms easier to monitor. Another breakthrough for the sea farmers. Experts in underwater imaging tech are now trialing the use of 3D digital models. Led by Tritonia Scientific, the company's testing ROVs in the hopes of creating digital twins of the seabed. This will help map out and monitor complex marine environments and habitats close to Scottish salmon farms. At the moment, divers face many challenges like lack of visibility, climate, and algal blooms. This new method allows researchers to remove the surrounding water at the click of a button using images captured by the model. Just one survey can generate a 3D model with a permanent record of the seabed at a fixed point in time, which can be used for comparison for years to come. From choosing potential fish farm locations to monitoring existing ones, this imaging technology has made the job way easier. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Europe's seaweed farming will be a game changer? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.